Hello, welcome to an IB Physics video lecture. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about describing motion. Uh, we're going to talk about displacement, velocity, and acceleration, the three fundamental quantities, the vectors that we use to describe how objects move through space. This is part of topic two of the IB Physics curriculum. This is mechanics, the good old bread and butter of physics, and the very first topic, motion. So we're just going to go over the very, very basics of motion. Uh, this is review from the pre-diploma course. So this is really no new information, but of course it's been a while. So we're gonna go back over what is a vector? What are these three things, displacement, velocity, and acceleration? And how do I interpret them on a graph? All right, so as a recap of vectors, what does that mean? Um, the vectors that we're gonna be talking about are displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Those are really the three things that you need to describe what something is doing in terms of an object moving. And when we say a vector, you want to remember this important definition because vectors are all over physics. They're everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. We're going to look at all kinds of different vectors. So a vector quantity is any quantity that has magnitude and direction. Magnitude refers to the size of the number. You can think of it that way. You want to think about it like an absolute value type of thing. Maybe we don't worry about a negative. So it's just the size, including units. So when we talk about, say, uh, 10 meters per second east, the 10 meters per second is the direct is the size east is the direction so that would be a vector that would be an example of say velocity uh, here's a good example uh, length versus distance right if I have like a block over here I can say uh, the length of the block is 10 centimeters but it, it wouldn't it would be silly to say it's like this length is 10 centimeters up right that doesn't mean anything length is just a, a size so 10 centimeters, the whole thing, including the units, 10 centimeters is the magnitude, right? Whereas in a car, I could say, okay, I drove 100 meters to the right. Now that's a displacement because I have a magnitude and I have a direction, which is to the right, or I could say it's positive X, or I could say it's east, whatever. As long as I have a direction, that's a vector. All right, so we'll go over that one first in, in detail. What is displacement? Here's the definition you do want to... Uh, know it pretty specifically, especially that it's relative to a zero, relative to its starting position. So how far away is an object from the point where it started? Uh, of course, that's a vector, and we use lowercase s for displacement uh, with a vector symbol. Whereas distance is a scalar, it just talks about total length traveled. So again, here's a good uh, picture just to give you an idea. You know, imagine you drove your car along this kind of blue line here. Uh, the distance would be what your like trip odometer in your car would read once you made it to the end, right? It's literally how far do you go as you take this winding path and turn and turn and go here, here, here. How far did you go in total? That's your distance. The displacement, though, is just how f where where you are relative to your starting point. How far away from the starting point are you? So that'd be this green line, right? You end up here. You started here. There you go, that's your displacement. So it's always a straight line from the starting point to where you are. And it does have direction. We could say southeast, maybe. We could say down and to the right. If we were feeling very specific, we could define like an angle relative to the horizontal. That would probably be the best way to give this thing a direction. It has both magnitude and direction. All right. Uh, the next vector that we use to describe motion is velocity. Uh, of course, velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Um, we'll use just a little v for this one with the vector symbol, so that's easy. Uh, and it's a rate of change, which means it's how displacement changes with time. If you think of the way you always see these units, meters per second, miles per hour, it's a distance over time because it's saying, you know, 10 meters per second means I'm moving 10 meters each second. That's what we mean by rate of change. The equation that we have to define it in the data booklet looks like this. Uh, velocity is delta s over delta t. You're going to see this a lot, this format of equation with two deltas on top of each other. Um, this is called a gradient, and it's how one variable changes with another. Delta is the symbol for change, right? So you would read this as the change in displacement over the change in time that we call a gradient. If you are taking calculus, you'll you'll learn of this 
uh, take this one step further and think of this as a, as a derivative, as a very quick rate of change. But for us, it's, it's good enough to think that it's just a rate of change. It's how your position changes as time changes. All right, and of course, speed is the scalar version. There is no direction. So your speed has to do with your total distance traveled, whereas the velocity has to do with your displacement. So the vectors are tied together, the scalars are tied together. And lastly, we have acceleration, which is the rate of change of velocity. This is how quickly your velocity changes. This is one of the most conceptually tricky ones I find. A lot of students, you think you're talking about acceleration, but you're really just talking about velocity. So think of acceleration, if you're changing your speed, that's acceleration. And how quickly you change your speed is the number that we're talking about. All right, so let's look at this. Again, it's a gradient, delta V over delta T, so rate of change of velocity. Uh, so it's how your velocity changes over time. So imagine you're sitting in your car and it's not moving and you hit the gas and you want to get up to 60 miles an hour. Right? How quickly you can do that is your acceleration. Uh, maybe your car speeds up every second, your car speeds up by 10 miles an hour, right? So you start at rest, you hit the gas, your car starts going. After one second, you're moving 10 miles an hour. Another second passes, now you're going 20 miles an hour. Another second passes, you're going 30 miles an hour, right? That would be an acceleration of 10 miles an hour per second. That's how quickly you're changing your speed. Now, usually we use meters per second squared, which you can think of as meters per second per second. So if I said something had an acceleration of two meters per second squared, I'm saying every second it changes its speed by two meters per second. Uh, really better to say every second it changes its velocity by two meters per second. Uh, and one thing to get used to when we're using these base units, meters per second squared, you're going to see this is the IB style, really the European style of writing out units. Uh, it is weird at first, but honestly, it ends up being much more convenient. It makes unit conversion, factor labeling, all that stuff uh, a lot easier because you don't end up with like fractions on top of fractions. So instead of using the, you know, second power in the denominator, we just go to a negative two exponent. You'll see the same kind of thing for like velocity is going to be meters seconds to the minus one so get used to seeing that you are welcome to continue writing things this way that's fine but you will see all of the problems and stuff with units like this all right so some basic basic stuff you can do with the motion graph we will get into more advanced motion graphing soon but when we talk about the gradient for now, it's good enough to think of when we're dealing with straight lines as the slope at a point. It's good enough to think of it as slope. It's really slope at a point on a curve. Um, but so for now, this is a pretty good, maybe a little bit simplified way to think about things. But the slope of our displacement versus time graph is the velocity. Again, that you should remember from pre-diploma physics. And same thing, the slope of velocity versus time graph gives a acceleration. Slope can be negative, so these things are all vectors. So if I'm going uphill, that's a positive slope. If I'm going downhill, that's a negative slope. Uh, so remember how we'll do this. We'll look at like a displacement versus time graph. We'll think about the slope of that graph because the slope of that graph is the velocity. And I can say things if the displacement versus time graph is going uphill, that means I have a positive velocity, right? And the slope of the graph would be the velocity. So of course, you're going to literally choose two points on the graph, take two y's, take two x's, get two ordered pairs, use a slope formula and find the slope, the mathematical slope, the number, the value, the quantity of the slope is the gradient. So it is the thing that you're looking for. So here's an example of a velocity versus time graph. Now velocity versus time graphs are good ones because they can be confusing. A lot of times what you want to do is you just kind of you read the graph like it's a picture and you picture what the object is doing, you really have to take your time with motion graphs. It is almost never gonna be the first thing that you think. So really take your time, think about what you're looking at. 
a lot of students will look at this graph and go, okay, let's say it's a car. Okay, so the thing goes up and then it kind of stays in place for a while and then it comes back down, stays in place, goes backward, stays where it is, comes back to the start. That would be true if this was a displacement graph, but it's a velocity graph. We gotta think about it, reading what it's telling me. So it's telling me how the velocity changes with time. So I gotta think about this as though, it starts at rest, it starts with zero velocity, then it starts going one meter per second. And it's speeding up in the positive direction. It's a positive velocity, so it's moving forward, and it's going one meter per second, then two, three, four meters per second. So here it speeds up, and now it's moving forward pretty quickly at a constant speed, because it's moving four meters per second this whole time four meters per second, every second moving forward. Uh, in this section, it is still a positive velocity, so it's still moving forward here, right? Because I have velocity of positive three meters per second, velocity of positive one meters per second. So I'm moving forward, but I'm slowing down until I eventually hit zero, and now the thing is at rest, but far away from where it started because it's been moving in the positive direction all this time. So it's at rest for a little while, now negative velocity, it starts going backwards. You throw the thing in reverse, now I'm going one meter per second backwards, two meters per second backwards, three meters per second backwards, constant speed of three meters per second backwards, still going backwards but slowing down eventually comes to rest. All right, so the velocity versus time graph, you and really any of these motion graphs, you really have to pause and think about what the graph is telling you. And then you gotta go even one level further because we might wanna know about the acceleration, and the acceleration is the slope of this graph. So what we would say is that, okay, if I want to talk about from zero to 10 seconds, I'm speeding up, I could do the math and figure out how quickly I'm speeding up. Uh, yeah, so I go from zero, zero to uh, 10, four. So I'm gonna do my change in Y over change in X, and I end up with 0.4, positive 0.4, right? The, the sign is very important. This is positive slope. My acceleration is positive 0.4 meters per second squared. In other words, every second, my speed, uh, my velocity increases by 0.4 meters per second in the positive direction. I could say, you know, uh, in this section, oops, in this middle section, there is no acceleration, uh, say from 60 to 70, there's negative acceleration because I have a negative slope. So any section you can chunk like this, take the slope that tells you something on this graph that tells me about acceleration. All right, so just some quick tips to keep in mind. If you have a curved line, that means the gradient is constantly changing. We will talk soon about how to deal with that in a math way, but conceptually, you just wanna have the idea that a curved line means the slope of the line at that point is changing, maybe getting steeper, maybe getting less steep, and you wanna think about what that means. But soon we'll talk about how you can deal with that and get a number. It's really good to label sections because this forces you to slow down, right? Like uh, if you see a displacement time graph with a positive slope, you can say, hey, that's a positive velocity. So constant speed in the positive direction. Really just take the time to jot some notes down about things that you know for sure from the graph. It'll force you to stop yourself and think and not go with your first picture, what you think the graph is saying, because you're conditioned to read graphs in a certain way and these are pretty different. Remember a horizontal line has zero slope, so the gradient is zero. So depending on what graph you got, some quantity is zero. Those are nice to see because they're easy. And like we just did with the velocity graph, don't forget to just read the graph, right? In the previous graph, if they say find the velocity, you don't have to do any kind of slopey stuff or anything. You just say, if, if they say find the velocity at 40 seconds, you just go, well, at 40 seconds, here we are, I'm going four meters per second, right? At 70 seconds, I'm going negative three. So you literally just sometimes just read the graph. So don't overcomplicate things if you don't need to. And that's what I got for you for the intro to motion graphing. It is classic. It will come up all the time. So make sure you're very comfortable with velocity, displacement, acceleration, and we will get uh, more exciting with them very soon. Have fun.